who first shared their stories in caves, connected art, nature, and science, led us toward new horizons. Who thought to capture motion, spark an engine to life, turn television into a playground? Every day, you create the playful, the functional, and the unexpected. You break down walls and take us to astonishing places. Tell stories, leave borders, and create beauty for tomorrow. Because at Unity, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it, where everyone has a chance to shape the world. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our 2021 SAPAC webinar series. Uh, we're coming to you today, all of us from Singapore, this team, uh, myself, uh, Jenny and Sarah from uh, the marketing team. And uh, we're also joined with our main presenter, uh, Wildy from the ads, uh, Unity ads team. How are you doing there today, Wildy? Hi, everyone. <laughs> so uh, we, like always, we cover a very diverse audience for South APAC. Uh, everywhere from India to New Zealand. So good morning in India if you're just waking up and very good afternoon after five in New Zealand. Uh, next slide, thanks, Sarah. Just a reminder of interaction rules for today's webinar. Uh, please do not use the chat for questions. Use the Q&A box in the bottom right of your screen. Uh, if there's any questions in chat, they may not be answered. We just use chat to post links, reference uh, resource materials. Uh, etc. Um, and we do not use the raise hand function in today's webinar also, so please uh, refrain from doing so. Uh, if you're watching us, uh, if you want to be in the, the draw to win a uh, swag pack from Unity, uh, we draw a winner each week. Um, please uh, fill out the survey form, which we will supply to at the end of this webinar. If you are joining us from any of the uh, other platforms, uh, live today. Uh, this is only available to registered attendees who attend via Zoom. So we'll leave this QR code up for a couple of seconds while I ramble on. Um, please scan that. You can register uh, your details for the page and we'll match that up with the uh, registration form at the end if you would like to qualify for this prize pack. And next slide. So we're in our, uh, we're just up over the halfway mark in our November and December content. Uh, we'll be leaving you on the 10th of December this year with our last piece of content. And today, Willie's gonna be talking about beginner's guide to user acquisition. So uh, this content was pre-recorded last night. If you're a regular joiner of ours, uh, we had some quality issues earlier in the year. So we pre-record this the night before so that we're able to optimize uh, quality where the UI um, is, in, uh, is involved. So over to you. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Wildy. Jenny? Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever you are. I hope everyone is having a great day so far. Thank you for tuning in to today's webinar. I am Willie Chang, and I am the client partner of the paid advertising here in Unity Ads. And today, I'll bring you through more about the basics on user acquisition, as well as the strategies, considerations, and other useful information for you to kickstart your very first UA campaign. So without further ado, let's begin today's webinar. First thing first, what is user acquisition? So in case if some of you are not aware of this or just have not even heard about UA, I have included this photo to give you a better understanding on what is UA. So you can imagine your app being the hand and the magnet, and these tiny people being the users that you want to attract. So the idea here is that you want your app to gain some attention from people so that you can earn some installs. So why is this important? 
these users they are the key essential to any game business success so as you can see here the player experience revolve around these three key important things you have spent a lot of time and resources in developing your game and the next thing that you want to do is to find users by acquiring them so first uh, in the chart we have acquire and then after that you also want to make sure that these people are well engaged and well retained in the app because you do not want those users who just made an install and exit after that so you also want to have that some sort of user quality and then once you have had a healthy daily active users you can also earn some revenue by monetizing your app whether it be from ads or in-app purchase and in case if you are curious to find out more about app monetization you can also tune in to my colleagues webinar which will happen next friday okay so once you have earned that revenue you can reinvest that money back to user acquisition if you want to grow your app user base and the cycle just goes on and on and this is how you want to maintain a healthy and sustainable app growth so how do we find these users there are two sources and the first one is through organic sources we have app store rank your app can get the easiest visibility if it's displayed in the app store rank of course but of course this is something that is not easy to do because it's very competitive and it is something that you can't control you can also gain some exposure if people are talking about you in social media or maybe they just do a normal search and we also have other organic avenues such as events which is kind of hard to do during this pandemic and we also have pr as well as word of mouth and on the other hand we also have paid ads first is on display ad for example those banners or gifs that you see in websites and then video ads the video that you see in youtube for example and then we also have in-app ads which is a format that's been very popular for paid ads especially for user acquisition so as the name suggests this is the kind of the ad that you see in the app itself so yeah don't worry i will talk more about in-app ads in a later portion we also have search ads so you can also pay some keywords so when users type that keyword you can get the number one like the first visibility in that sense and last but not least we also have influencer marketing which has been getting very popular so now that you have understood about organic and paid media which one should you choose so i've included this um, mini video from the app marketplace just to give you an idea on what's currently going on there so according to statistia we have over 3.4 million of apps in google play and over 2 million apps in apple store so it is very apparent that it is indeed a saturated market it can be very very challenging to access reliable sources of organic traffic and you can imagine one app trying to break through the clutter among those million of apps which is something that is very difficult to do and another thing that you want to take note is how are you going to measure the numbers so to run a successful business having those numbers ready will be more, very convenient for you to you know do some planning or even prediction of your business outcome and when it comes to user quality this is where paid ads has given a bit of an edge here because gameplay exposure before the install will increase the chance of you acquiring better quality users these people they know what they're expecting for hence they tend to stay longer as per compared to those users who made the installs with no idea on what to expect okay so back to the question paid or organic so with that being said i would still recommend you to utilize these two together as these two work together simultaneously but of course given the competitive landscape and everything 
paid UA is now a necessity of a game success. So now that you have understood about the concept of user acquisition, what's next? How to get started? Before we start on this section, I would like to introduce you to what's going on in the paid media ecosystem, as well as to introduce you on the key stakeholders that you need to take note of. So we have three here. And the first one is on user acquisition. So these are the ad networks where all the campaign bidding and setting take place. And then we also have ad attribution and UA analytics. So these are the third party partners where they will track all the data points of the user all the way from the beginning till the end because you want all these data to make business decision. And last but not least, we have influencer marketing. So these are marketing agencies that will help you to connect you to the right talent or influencer to talk more about your app. But for today's presentation, we'll be focusing only on user acquisition and the ad attribution and UA analytics. So in order not to overwhelm you, I have prepared a user acquisition checklist. So here are the things that you need to take note of before you start your first UA campaign. First thing first, of course, you wanna decide on the testing budget that you wanna start with, along with the country targeting, what are your goals, what are the price benchmark, and then the creatives, as well as choosing the right ad network and attribution partner. So when it comes to the test budget, this is a question that I get a lot. And for this one, I would recommend you to go through these, this simple thought process rather than just settling to a random or arbitrary number. First thing first, you need to be clear about your goals. What do you want to achieve by running these UA campaigns? So for example here, maybe you wanna achieve 100,000 in sales in one month. And after knowing your goals, you drill down to the targeting, taking Southeast Asian countries as an example here. And then you will have to find out what is the average cost for Southeast Asian countries. And here, this is just an estimated number. The CPI is at 10 cents. So from these data, you can calculate, sort of calculate the estimated budget by multiplying the average price and your goals. And this is how we derive this $10,000 as the estimated test budget. So when it comes to country targeting, there is no straightforward answers on, you know, oh, you need to target this particular countries only or that particular country only. So I would recommend you to sort of understand the competitive landscape and the market demand of all those countries that you already have in mind. And from there, you drill down and analyze their common user behavior and aligning it back with your targeting strategy. So just to give you an example here, I have taken Vietnam as an example. So these two screenshots were taken from Aptopias and these two are the top chart games in Vietnam dissected by its platform. So on the left-hand side, these are the iOS, this is the iOS chart and the right hand side is the Android chart. And from these two alone, we can already see a huge difference. In iOS, RPG games, or we also call it the mid to hardcore games, are more popular. And in Android side, we see a lot more casual and puzzle games. And these RPG games, they rely a lot more on in-app purchase and casual games rely a lot more on ad revenue. So from these two alone, we can already make an assumption that iOS users in Vietnam tend to have higher purchasing power compared to Android. So let's say if you wanna do a UA campaign on casual games, you might wanna focus more of your budget to Android, up to the Android platform. So yeah, I mean, this is just one of the example, but I believe that this is the kind of thought process that you can adopt before you decide and finalize your country targeting. Okay, so 
Earlier, I've mentioned that I'll be talking a little bit more about in-app ads. So I want to show the user journey and what to expect when a user is shown um, with an in-app ad. So taking Tom as an example here, I'm sure many of you have heard or known about this game called Among Us. So he played this game and he was among, you know, the last survival there. Unfortunately, he was killed by the imposter and the game ended. Sad story. But yep, in order for him to regain his life back and to restart a new round, a video ad was shown to Tom. And this is a video ad on Thief Puzzle. He found this ad very interesting, so he watched it till the very end, and an end card was shown after the video. He clicked download for free, and he was directed to Apple Store, and he made the install. So yeah, the reason why I wanna show you this user journey is for you to you know, take note and understand all of these touch points, as I'll be talking more about the key metrics now. So what are the metrics that you need to take note of user acquisition? First thing first, awareness. So for this one, you wanna measure how many users are being exposed to the ad. And hence we are measuring the impression and the cost per mile, or we also call it the cost per 1000 impression. And then next in the funnel, we have consideration. We want to know how many people are actually interested in this ad, hence, we are measuring the clicks and the click through rate. And then we also have conversion after that. This is, I would say, one of the more crucial KPIs for user acquisition, because we want to know how many of them are actually making the installs. So we are measuring the conversion rate as well as the cost per one install. And after the installs, you can also measure the user quality by these post conversion KPIs. First, we have retention rate. You wanna know how many people are actually staying and what are their LTV or lifetime value in that game. We can also measure the return on advertising spend. Um, you can measure your ad revenue in a purchase or both. But for today's presentation, I would like to zoom in more on the conversions key metrics. Okay, now let's talk more about the CPI benchmark. Again, this is another question that I get a lot. What is the right price for me to start with? So to answer this, honestly, it depends. So I have included these examples. The left-hand side is the tier one English speaking countries, such as Canada, US, and UK. And then on the right-hand side, we have tier one APAC countries, such as Korea and Japan. So from the countries alone, we can already see that the average CPI varies. And then the, the next obvious factor is on the platform itself. As you can see here, the red colored lines, which are the iOS ones, tend to be a little bit more expensive when you compare it to the Android ones. So I would say that on average, iOS CPIs are 20 to 25% higher than Android ones. So the reason behind this is because, you know, the mobile penetration is bigger in Android as per compared to iOS, making iOS a little bit more scarce. And we can, and according to our data, these iOS users, they tend to have better purchasing power which is the reason on why CPIs are higher in iOS. And another factor that also determines the CPI is the game category itself. So from these two screenshots alone, it is very consistent that card and casino games are more expensive than casual games such as arcade, casual itself, puzzle, and racing. Okay, so um, thinking about these factors in mind, what I would recommend you is to approach your account manager before your you know, very first UA campaign and request them the CPI benchmark according to the country, category, and the platform. 
Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the creatives. So I have a couple of tips and tricks that will help you in your creative creation. The first one is, of course, to include the gameplay. Again, taking T-Fuzzle as an example here. So the developer is trying to convey a message on what to expect from T-Fuzzle. It's about a stickman trying to steal things from people by, you know, adjusting the hands. So this kind of gameplay, it will give an idea on what the user can expect after they install the app. Another common tip here is to use eye-catching indicators. So taking this game Turtle Puzzle as an example, so they use a hand with gloves um, as the indicator to tell the users on how to play and just like a little bit of snippet on what to expect. And this will really help make the content more understandable. And you can experiment with different styles. Maybe you can use a hand or a pointer or other point of, you know, creative pointers that you can think of. And this lead me to the next tip that I want to show you, which is to always test creatives. This is actually a best practice that I always recommend to new and even existing clients. You can test different variations, such as the video length, color, and many more, really. And this is just an example of the experiment that we have done before with one of our clients. And as you can see here, they have added these tiny pumpkins for the holiday theme of Halloween. And he also tested some dark background as well as the light background according to different platforms. So the possibilities and variables are pretty much endless. And the idea here is to find that sweet spot performance for your campaigns by just tweaking some small portion of the creatives. Because sometimes, well, most of the time, even tweaking a small thing in your creative can result in a significantly better result. Okay. Hang in there, we are almost at the very uh, last pointer in the checklist. So the next thing is choosing the right ad network. I know that choosing this can be very overwhelming because there are just so many of them. How do you know which ad network is good? How do you know which ones are not so great? So in order for you to decide on that, I would recommend you to refer to a reputable data so just taking this as an example, this is a chart from Apps Flyer Performance Index. There are also other sources from other ad attribution partner, such as Singular, Pochava, and many more. So now let's talk about the ad attribution partner. So as mentioned earlier, having all those data, they're very crucial for you to make your you know, decision to know what worked, what didn't work. So it is very important for you to work with a mobile attribution partner. But for here um, in Unity Ads, we support these all attribution partners like Kochawa as Flyer and many more. And if you have your engineering team to build your own application servers, you can also do that. But at the end of the day, we just need two things you will have to provide the start attribution link and the click attribution link. That's pretty much it. Okay, so yay, we have finally ticked off all of the things in the checklist. And I believe that by now, maybe you have a couple of ad networks that you have in mind. But in case if you are wondering about how Unity Ads is currently doing, so yeah, I would like to introduce a little bit about Unity Ads. Let's start off with the numbers first. So Unity Ads, we have reached to over 2.5 billion of devices just last year. And to give you a bit of reference for you to compare, Facebook has reached to over 2.7 billion. And these 2.5, 90 to 95% are from gaming inventory, making us the biggest in gaming. We have served over 30 billion of ads each month and have garnered over 250 million of installs in each month. 
And when it comes to the creatives, we support three different types of ad formats to capture the user's attention. So the first format here is on mobile video. We support up to 30 seconds and you can do either horizontal or vertical. And if you could recall the teeth puzzle example, so for every video ad, we will, we will always add an end card to support the video ads. And this can be either a static photo or a GIF. And then we will also integrate a call to action button. The, for example, the download for free button here that will direct the user to the Apple store or Google store. And then next we have this playable format. So this is a very interesting format. This is an HTML kind of ad where you can allow the user to interact the ad. So this is really like the, um, the way for you to give a better snippet to the users on what to expect after they download this app. This app. And next, this is our latest format. So we have combined mobile video and playables. So this kind of format has been proven to be really popular in iOS format. So really, um, you can experiment um, with these three different formats. You mix and match and find out which one works best for your app. So when it comes to our dashboard, so our acquired dashboard is a self-serve dashboard where all the campaign settings and optimization can be done on your end. But as you can see here, I mean, these are just a, um, two screenshots. Our dashboard is pretty clean and straightforward. So the campaign settings and everything can be done very easily. But if you are curious to know more about the dashboard or if you want a mini demo, you can always send me an email after this webinar and I will gladly show it to you. So when it comes to the types of campaigns, we have three types of campaigns that you can leverage depending on your goal. So first we have scale campaign. This is the default form of campaign that all advertisers will have to run first. So if you want to gain as much installs as possible, this is the campaign for you. And then we also have the more specialized campaign, retention and ROAS campaign, or also called as, you know, return on advertising spend, yeah. But before we go deeper into these two campaigns, I would like to explain a little bit on audience pinpointer. So, you know, we've been running campaigns for a while now, and we noticed that many developers, they are getting more interested in a more, you know, advanced post-conversion kind of metrics, such as retention and ROAS. So having these developers and users in mind, we created this machine learning algorithm. So this will help you to find the players who are more likely to have specific value beyond their app install. And diving into this audience pinpointer optimization, we have two types of campaigns. So the first one is on retention campaign. As the name suggests, this is when you wanna acquire users who are more likely to stay in the app as long as possible. And then we also have return on ad spend or ROAS campaign. So this is if you want to acquire users who will drive more returns in the form of revenue. And there are two sub optimizations here. You can either optimize for in-app purchase or ad revenue or both. So this one really depends on your games. So for instance, if you are a role-playing game, maybe you can optimize for in-app purchase. And if you are a puzzle game, you can optimize for ad revenue. Okay, so yay, we are finally closer to the end of this webinar. Thank you everyone for, you know, making it this far. But before ending this webinar, a UA webinar will not be complete without mentioning about iOS 14. In case if you are not aware of what had happened, so last year, Apple has changed their privacy setting, whereby developers can only get user level data 
only if the user has given the consent to allow tracking. And to give you a better idea, this is the prompt that the user get um, where to you know, ask permission from them whether they want to allow tracking or not. So this has really changed the UA practice as a whole uh, in the whole industry. But with that being said, in Unity, we have taken immediate action to comply with this change. And this experiment was one of the first things that we did. And the purpose of this experiment is to really understand the user behavior on their opt-in and opt-out rates by just tweaking some of these variables. So here are just some of the variables that we tested. We tried tweaking the lines of text, like some prompts are with you know, just one line. We also tested with longer prompts. And then we also tweaked the language. For example, here, we compared a sample message of advertising and analytics versus optimize your game experience. And lastly, we also tested with the types of pre-prompts. On the left-hand side, we see a more cartoonish and branded pre-prompt, while on the right-hand side, we see the iOS more you know, generic kind of pre-prompt. It was a very interesting experiment. And in case if you are curious to find out more about the results, the insights and everything, you can visit us here at our iOS 14 Resource Center. So this is the page where we always continuously update about any iOS 14 related information and guidance. It also included featured content, including the checklist, the webinars, and our readiness white paper. We also have articles about, you know, what are the things that we did uh, with this change that to comply with the changes, I mean, <laughs> including the ads SDK prom, privacy reporting, and many more. So, yep, you can visit us here in case if you want to know more about our actions on iOS 14. So, yep, uh, we have finally come to an end to this webinar. Thank you everyone for, you know, listening to this webinar and I hope you find this webinar very useful and yeah, thank you everyone. You can visit to our website in case if you want more information about Unity ads, you can also email me here at willy.cheng at Unity Treaty in case if you have a more specific question or in case if you want to know more about our Acquire dashboard. So yep, thank you everyone. And now the floor is open for question and answer. Awesome, thanks Bildi. Um, really good overview. Uh, always interesting to get updates from your team. Uh, so Q and A, we've got a very quiet audience today. Unusually quiet. I don't know if you've uh, given them a great number of points to think about. There's one question there in the Q and A. Um, would you like to take that one, Wilde? I heard I heard Unity iOS is strong in uh, user acquisition and uh, monetized size. Can you explain why? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, Wilde. You're muted. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me now. Okay, so um, the very first question here is that, okay, someone has asked that Unity iOS is strong in user acquisition and the monetized side. Can you explain why? Okay, so um, honestly, um, regarding to iOS, I know that um, this is a very you know interesting period in the, advertising industry. So when it comes to iOS, I'm sure that every network has their own way in combating this. But on the Unity end, the reason why, I mean, I can say that we are well prepared about this. As soon as we heard about this news, we took immediate actions. We experimented with many, many things to comply with this. 
because we do not want to, you know, um, cause any disruption to our clients on both demand and the supply side as well. So um, there are many actions that we did. It's really like, um, it will take some time for me to explain everything. But one of the things that we did is that we immediately updated our SDK to comply to this. And then we also perform, you know, the experiment earlier just to understand better on the opt-in and the opt-out rates, because um, we also want to learn like what are the things that will make the like the user agree to share or not. And yeah, those are just like one of them. But yeah, if you are curious to know what are all the things that we have done, you can always check our resources. Yeah. Yes, if you have any other question, feel free to, you know, pop in in the Q&A box. Okay, I think uh, just a, a plug for the uh, webinar survey form, uh, standard chance to win a Unity prize pack. We give away one of these each week to people who are registered. Uh, with us who attend via Zoom. That draw will take place about 30 minutes after the webinar today, uh, and the winner will be contacted. The survey link is there. Um, you can either find it in the chat window or you can scan the QR code on screen. Now, it doesn't look like there's any more questions coming through. So uh, with that, I would uh, like to say uh, thank you, Willie and Chong, for today's presentation. I think we have you guys up next week for another session. Um, on a different topic, and uh, to my uh, uh, big thanks to my uh, amazing co-workers I work with on a daily basis, Sarah and Jenny. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, please look out for next week's content. A couple of weeks left to go, and we're going to be sending out soon a survey form to uh, about all of our 2021 content, and we'd love to hear back from you. So when we're programming next year, uh, we have uh, uh, material that's uh, really going to suit your needs. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care.